So, welcome everybody. It's nice to be back. I'm ready to go now. Okay, because uh, it's, I think it's been about six weeks since I've done a program, folks. So, uh, I normally always take a break over the, you know, the Christmas, New Year's holidays for three weeks, but I had some other stuff that had me traveling. You know, it was really interesting. I went back and I kind of did a briefing on my schedule and I thought last year, 2023, was the year of travel for me. I made two trips to Norway, two trips to India, one trip to London, and three trips to Africa. All in last year. I thought, oh my gosh. So, but guess what? I don't have anything planned for this year specifically. Now, yes, of course, there will be some stuff. And I will be making, you know, I, I travel a lot. And I kind of enjoy the travel. It doesn't bother me. So, But as of now, I have nothing on my agenda or my schedule. Now, let me make a couple of comments here. First of all, my website is currently not up and operational. I am making a transition from the Cosmic Connections name, which was the CosmicConnections.wordpress.com, back to the Sedona Connection, and it will be the SedonaConnection.com. I've got to jump through a bunch of hoops with my uh, whoever my registrar is and all that kind of stuff, and it was kind of complicated, and I've got to get on the phone and work that through with them, and. I have been away for the last couple of days over the Christmas holidays I mean, and New Year's holidays, but I hopefully I'll have the website back up uh, within the next three to four days. But folks, there's nothing that's urgent on there now, okay? So that's not anything that you have to be concerned about. Basically, what I do on the website is where I post, you know, the, the programs here. And also, that's where you go for all the workshop information. And I haven't had any workshops for a while, but yes, I will be getting back onto the workshop schedule and doing workshops probably about one every three to four weeks. But here we are now. I've got three that are tentatively scheduled, which means I need to, you know, to fill out the details. But I don't see anything changing in this one. January 27th, Santa Ana, California, Southern California. February 7th, Denver. I've had a lot of people de from Denver saying, when you coming, when you coming? February 7th, folks, for Denver. And then March 9th, I'm going to do my first workshop here back in Sedona for some time. After I moved, I didn't really do them in Sedona. I started doing them down in the Phoenix area. But hey, I'm here now, folks. I'm ready to come be back home. It's nice being back home in Sedona. That is what is new. Uh, when I made my move from Texas, I had a choice, you know, I could load up everything in my car and pull my trailer on an eight foot utility trailer behind me. And I figured, you know, it'd take me about three trips versus renting a U-Haul truck. Those trucks are not cheap to rent, folks. Then you got to pay the gas. And that was about a thousand miles from my home in Texas to here in Sedona, my new back home place here. And so you can imagine a thousand miles when you're only getting six to eight miles a gallon in a truck. Plus, I think it was $2,200 for the truck. And I figured it would I would save almost a thousand dollars if I just did my car and trailer. And I did. And I took three trips, which means two days to get out, unload, two days to get back. Oh, boy, did I underestimate that. It took me five trips to get everything done. But I am here. I'm done. Texas is done. That's a past life. Thankful for my time there. But it is nice to be back home here in Sedona. Sedona always had that wonderful feeling of home for me. So it's really nice to be back. Okay. So now, uh, let me do, as I'm going through all my notes here, I mentioned the website. I mentioned the workshops. Okay. And for those of you that are still wanting to participate in the currency exchange, I had been making some comments that you could basically purchase a million dong for $62 a million. And remember, when you purchase that money, that what we're doing is that we're purchasing the dong from the broker and the funder. Normally, you would physically buy your own dong wherever you want to get it. You send it to me then I add that, either create your account or add that to your account, and then that gets sent to 
the broker. Now, the broker, which is, I call the, you know, the Texas Processing Office, they collect these currencies from all around the country. And then when they have a large sum of them, they basically send it on a private plane to Hong Kong, which is the main office for all of the exchanges. And then when Hong Kong has a large volume, they take it, because they, they basically, it goes to Hong Kong and it gets deposited into a bank account. So it's like if you have a foreign currency, let's say you have a, a Canadian $100 bill. Well, you take it into your bank and you say, I want this deposited into my bank account. They'll convert it over to the U.S. dollar rate, and that's what you get deposited in your account. Well, that's the same thing that happens with the dong. It gets deposited into a Hong Kong bank account, and then the Hong Kong bank sends all the dong over, and they do their interbank exchanges with Vietnam and Hong Kong. But in essence, all of our primary accounts go through Hong Kong and then also through the Texas Processing Office. Now, in this whole exchange process, my understanding is there's three primary places where this takes place. You have the Hong Kong office, you have the Texas processing office, and then there's another one in Switzerland. And that's where everything takes place with this whole currency exchange. So, and what they have is because this is taking longer, the accounts that are there at the Texas Processing Office are continuing to grow. They're continuing to expand. They're continuing to get more funds. So they have more funds available, which means that we have the ability to continue to purchase more dong from them. So if you still want to purchase more dong, yes, you can. I usually do a default you know, one of about you purchase 5 million dong, and that costs $312. I send you a a link where you can use any debit or credit card to pay for that. If you want to do that, you need to send me uh, your uh, your email. You need by email. You must send me a request. It's important that I have the request from you so that it looks like it was initiated by you and it was your desire to be into this, and I wasn't the one who was trying to sell you or coerce you or whatever. So you have to initiate the request by sending me an email. I think that is pretty much what I have there. Now, what in the world is going on right now? All my different sources that I really like listening to that are kind of tell me what's going on out there in what I call the shadow world. Because remember, in the workshops I share that we live in two worlds, the conventional world, which is everything that is presented to us through the news, the media, you know, and all the normal upfront out there in the public stuff. That's the conventional world. And then there's what I call the shadow world. What goes on in the shadows, behind the scenes, that is not out there to public information and knowledge. And the shadow world, we have to remember, it's not just black hats that operate in the shadow world. White hats operate there as well. But basically, they are organizations or people that don't want this out there massively in the public. But there are organizations like this one here, mine, and others that we are involved with them and we have access to their information. The currency exchange is a private contract exchange that operates in the shadow world. Now, they basically allow anybody to come in that wants to, but they also have the right at any time that they so desire to say, no, we're not going to do this exchange with you. We'll refund whatever money you sent to us. I mean, they have the right to do that, okay? But that's what goes on. So what's happening out there in the shadow world? A lot of good, different, credible sources are saying it is getting intense. It's getting kind of crazy. It's getting kind of chaotic. And the sources I really enjoy are, number one is Ben Fulford. I told you about him. The other is Barbara Marciniak and, the, and how she channels the Palladians, the information that comes from them. Uh, and then I'm trying to remember, uh, uh, there's another one that, I boy, I'm trying to remember her name. I'm going blank on it. That she does some good channeling messages uh, Joni Patree, I really like getting the information from her as well. 
And there's a couple others in that that are secondary, and I can't remember them all right off, but the ones I really enjoy are Ben Fulford and Barbara Marciniak and the Palladians. And both of them are saying, buckle up, folks, for the year 2024, because 2024 is going to be a year of crazy, chaotic events that will be happening. Now, why does that? Why do they say that? We understand that we live in a world where everything is energy. And this energy that gets propagated into our world predicates the experiences and the events that go on around us. And energy, has the energy basically brings itself into our earthly environment, it happens in cycles. And that's why that these people can basically say, in a specific year, this is the type of energy that's going to be coming into our world and they're saying 2024 is a buckle up year folks it's a year to buckle up because there's going to be a lot of crazy chaotic things that are going to be going on now what i want to do i'm just going to read from you some of the comments that have come off of the last couple of newsletters from ben fulford he says the world especially the western world is in a situation like japan was in at the end of World War II after it agreed to surrender before U.S. troops landed take, to take over. It's in an intergonum, inter, if that's the appropriate word. Okay, What cannot be disputed is that the current international system is dysfunctional and the entire United States system, not only inter, internal politics, but also economic, is completely dysfunctional. The White Hat proposal calls for replacing the United Nations Security Council with a group representing seven districts. These are seven districts around the world, like, you know, North America, South America, Europe, Southeast Asia, etc., stuff like that. Okay. And also the White Hat proposal calls for replace. I mean, uh, the other proposal calls for taking the functional parts of the World Bank the International Monetary Fund, the Bank of Insurance, International Settlements, etc., and incorporating them into a future planning organization with a multi-trillion dollar annual budget. The other proposal is to start off the new age with a jubilee. That's a very positive for us. This would be a one-off cancellation of all debt, private and public, as well as a one-off redistribution of assets. Now, our sources say the Kazarian Mafia group is planning some sort of massive black swan 9-11 type of event in order to start a new world war and rescue the military industrial complex from bankruptcy. In other words, this is what is behind the talk of the massive cyber attack that takes down the U.S. financial sector or power grid. The result, of course, would be devastating and could lead to widespread chaos and financial collapse, and it will be blamed on China. I want to make a side note, folks. They've been, the Kazarian Mafia has been wanting to do an event like this for some time. And Fulford is basically saying there is still a possibility that that could happen. They will create this huge, massive cyber attack. Banks would end up losing all their money, or we would end up basically having a complete uh, power grid shutdown and again they said they would blame it on China that's why it's extremely important if you have discretionary money sitting in banks this is money you don't use for your normal living and operational expenses but it's you have like thousands of dollars I highly encourage you take it out of the bank and use it to buy gold or silver or other hard assets that you can easily convert back into cash if necessary. Have them as hard assets. Personally, myself, I buy silver. That's what I do. I buy silver bars and then I put them in a private safe that I have. Okay. Now, he says the U.S., of course, remains the worst back basket case. And the latest sign of this was found on the IRS website. Folks, you aren't going to believe what I'm going to read to you. This is on the IRS website. It says, illegal activities 
Income from illegal activities such as money from dealing illegal drugs must be included in your income on Schedule 1 or on Schedule C if from your self-employment activity. Can you believe that? The IRS is saying if you're getting illegal money from dealing drugs, you got to report it on your IRS statement. How crazy can they be? Who in the world is going to say, okay, government, I'm involved in illegal drug selling activity. Now, here's my money. I'm going to report it in the IRS. Come arrest me. Gee whiz. Now, here's the other, the second paragraph. Stolen property. If you steal property, you must report its fair market value in your income on the year you steal it unless you return it in its to its rightful owner in the same year. So if you're involved in illegal drug activity, if you've stolen some property, you got to report its value on your on your tax statement. I can't believe, I, I won't say anything more. <laughs> but here's what Fulford says. So we have an openly criminal government in the U.S. now. They are looking to tax thieves because honest people are taking action against the banks that own the U.S. government. Last year, U.S. domestic banks saw a stunning $1.17 trillion in deposit outflows, the largest annual decline ever and only the third annual decline since records began. In essence, people are pulling their money out of the banks because they don't trust the criminality of the system. They don't trust the fact that the system might totally collapse and they can lose all their money. And I just said to you, I would pull any exit. We still need our banks. We need our debit cards to do our operational expenses. That's understandable. But you just heard what he just said. Look at what's happening. The money is being pulled out of the banks at record rates more than ever before. And in 2023, it was $1.17 trillion. Now, I want to read you another statement from the Epoch Times. This is a great, great uh, kind of what I call good classical conservative newspaper that really reports what's going on in this world that the others don't. It says, Economist claims 2024 will bring the biggest crash of our lifetime in the United States. It says, since 2009, this, this has been 100% artificial, unprecedented, money printing and deficits 27 trillion over 15 years to be exact economist harry dent told fox business on december 19th this is off the charts 100 percent artificial which means we are in a dangerous state over 27 trillion dollars has just been printed up and thrown out there into the economy over the last 15 years and it creates absolute economic crisis when it does that. He says, I think 2024 is going to be the biggest single crash year we'll see in our lifetime. You're going to see it start and be more obvious by May. In the past few weeks, several analysts have been making similar predictions of a significant stock market crash in the near future. So he says it's going to be very obvious by May that we're going to be moving into probably the biggest crash we've ever seen in our lifetime, bigger than the Great Depression back in the, you know, the 1929 through about 1934-35 era. That's what's coming our way, and a lot of different economists are saying that. So that's why I really encourage you that it's basically you do what you want to do, Obviously, it's your decision, but like me, I'm pulling all of my non-functional money out of banks, and I, I buy silver. That's what I do, okay? In 2024, we will be moving into the Chinese Year of the Dragon. The Year of the Dragon will be a fast, strong, passionate year of change. People standing up strongly from a position of passion, courage, integrity and honesty. Sweeping changes will be witnessed, seemingly very sudden and sometimes shocking. 
But in reality, the preparation for these major events have been in play for some time. The major sweeping events and changes in all aspects of people's lives will be the culmination of all the preparation that has been ongoing previously in people's thoughts, words and minds. Previously, where ideas have only been in the background, where people have been stuck, ruminating or lacking courage even, it will all suddenly come up to be enacted and enormous waves of courage to speak, to act and to change will be seen. It will seem as though it has come from nowhere, but it has been simmering in people's subconscious, deep down in the depths of their hearts, and suddenly they will feel the passion, the urgency to act, to strike and to change. Personal and global transformations will arise almost instantaneously without seeming prior warning. The energy of the Year of the Dragon is strong, wild, passionate, sweeping and all-encompassing. Any change within people's deeper longings will now surface unexpectedly with great force and dynamism. On the global map, countries, causes, new communities, forgotten communities will now all step up courageously to enact global, personal and community changes in a dynamic, transformational way. There will be no turning back from this global and societal renaissance. Everyone will suddenly find their true passion, their true authentic voice, and they will step forward. Renaissance is powerful change with no turning back. A do or die energy will prevail globally. Great courage will be witnessed as societies all around the globe stand up for change, stand up for progress, stand up for transformation. There will be no turning back. The global revolution is here. Those who had been in a conscious slumber will be dynamically stirred, jolted and catapulted into actions, words and situations of irreversible change. Things that no longer hold true to societal and global growth will be powerfully swept aside to make way for the new. A younger generation of light workers will step up to the plate and they will demand that all of society now stop clinging to outdated notions. The year of the dragon is a powerful, dramatic year. People's lack of integrity and authenticity will no longer be allowed to hide or linger in the shadows of organisational structures or societal coddling or ignorance. This will be a time for naming and shaming, a time for justice. All karma on a global scale 
will now be brought to the surface for examination. No stone will be left unturned. The year of the dragon will be fortuitous financially for those who have balanced their karmic and akashic records. For those who have balanced their karmic and akashic records in favour of being of service through their vibration and light. Great wealth will be seen in some previously unknown sectors of society prompting a huge redistribution of assets to different sectors of society never seen before. Changes in monetary setup will be life-changing in many sectors of society during the coming year of the dragon. Leaders with immense power and fortitude will rise to create a worldwide network of good fortune as countries weave together under the auspices of the new strong leaders. Leaders of truth, leaders of integrity, working towards one goal, one goal of unity. The ambitious year of the dragon will bring all factions together using guile, stealth, diplomacy and love. Great leadership will be witnessed globally. A cohesive plan of leadership will start to be witnessed and the good of humanity will be its guiding principle. World technology will move rapidly towards decentralising decision-making to the people and layers of stuck, cumbersome bureaucracy and government organisations will continue to crumble and fall. Many old structures, now outdated, will be dismantled. A new bold army and military of white hats will emerge internationally, sometimes in the front leading, but mostly in the background guiding, protecting and encouraging decentralised power to the people. Ethics in business, people management, money management, government will all come under the spotlight and those things not serving the people will be dismantled sometimes abruptly. More truth-telling media will arise where the people's voice will be the main focus and not political motivated subgroups or factions. The platforms for truth and non-censorship will grow exponentially with older controlling media outlets and sources collapsing, restructuring rapidly to keep up with the societal change. The people will demand change in the year of the dragon, their force being so powerful that it will be difficult for the current governmental and financial systems and in some cases the military setup to prevail. It will all fall abruptly with great force and speed. The year of the dragon will be fast, determined and resolute. Nothing can stand in the way of this enormous wave of change which is about to engulf every sector of society globally. 
even spiritual practice will be pursued with vigour. People will hear their heartbeat, their heart's desires, and they will meet their great love and will pursue everything that stimulates passion, creativity and joy. Some flashes of anger will be seen as these strong transmutational energies stir up those who religiously stay in a position of not moving forward. The year of the dragon will uproot even the most embedded stubborn factions of society and organisations on a global scale like never seen before. To manage the energies of this enormously powerful year of forward movement, then the body must be kept moving. Otherwise, anxiety will rise up. Anxiety is always a sign to get active. Do not procrastinate any longer. This year is about movement, positive movement in body, mind and soul. Anything you have desired or wished for, anything that you have been manifesting, it will all spring forth this year under the favourable auspices of the energy of the year of the dragon. Be brave, centre yourself, breathe, engage with your heart's desires, manifest, manifest, manifest. Humanity will be changed forever in the year of the dragon. In the year of the dragon, be brave. Speak up and act for the good of humanity. Beacons of light, this is your time. Go forth and serve. Okay, well, that, let me see now if I can come back to the my live video here. And if that comes back on now, let's see here. If I refresh my Facebook page, uh, is the live one? Yes, I am. So I'm back on live again now, folks. So send me a little notice there. So, uh, yeah, okay. So great, great video. Folks, if you want to watch that again, it is on my Facebook page, and it will be there. And you can go there and you'll be able to watch that again. But here's what's interesting. In that, I think it's around around the eight minute mark, they were talking about the financial segment where a lot of different groups, not ordinary groups, are going to come into large sums of financial uh, security, etc., stuff like that. When I first heard that, I thought, folks, man, that speaks to us us here in the currency exchange, because this is such an unordinary perspective of what is happening for us, and it's so different. And I thought that really spoke to us. And then here was another thought that I had. It's ironic that this is the year of the dragon, because all of this started with the dragon families. It was nine years ago, a little over nine years ago, I visited them in Hong Kong for the first time, and they became acquainted with their background, their history, and this massive amount of gold that they have been basically collecting and holding for 
two to three thousand years that has been going on with them, and they are the they are the initial source of the funds that funded the Texas Processing Office. So the Dragon families are a very big part of that. So all of that is kind of ironic in that whole structure there. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, I'm willing to say. Uh, I think I've pretty much made all my comments for tonight. We're about, oh, 40 minutes into the program. And uh, if anybody wants to call in, if you would like to make it, have any questions or make any comments, uh, that number again is 515-605-9356. Again, it's 515-605-9356. If you would like to call in some make some comments or if you've got some questions, We'll wait, oh, basically about 30 seconds to a minute here to see <clears throat> if anybody would like to call in. If not, I'm kind of almost ready to call it a night, but I think that video tonight spoke to a lot of what we can anticipate. I would encourage you to go back and watch it again. It will be on my Facebook page, so you can just go directly there instead of being able to, you know, have to go through the program here and kind of get it there. So I am not seeing anybody else that is willing to uh, call in. So, well, I think I'm re ready to call it a night, but yes, I am planning on being back next week. Uh, now that I said, you know, I've made my transition, I've moved back here to Sedona, and I've done all my traveling I did last year, I should pretty much be here at least every week or every other week for the next foreseeable amount of time. So, just a reminder again, uh, I'm going to schedule a workshop January 27th in Santa Ana, Southern California. So if that's you're interested in that, you might want to put that on your calendar. And in the next couple of days, I'll be coming out with uh, the registration on that. Got to get my website fixed up first, and then that's when I'll be able to send out the newsletter, okay? All right, folks. Nice to be back. Thank you all of you for joining me this week. <laughs>